Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ernesto Martinez. Joining me, as always, is David Powers King. Voltron Legendary Defender, Episode 7, Reclaim Balmera Review. As the title suggests, the Paladins return to Balmera in order to liberate them from the clutches of the Empire Gala. And along the way, as they are trying to liberate them, there is some resistance because the Balmerans have been under the heels of the Empire for so long that they just don't want to even breathe or utter the idea of trying to escape and be free. And then we also get the introduction of an impending doom, much like the Gladiator from last time, but we also get to find out more about the Balmerans, the planet, that the planet is alive, and the mythology behind the Balmeras and the crystals. And I have to say that they did, well, I was really, I just thought it was really cool how they explained Balmera more and its people, and that they can actually communicate with this planet. I mean, the, these creatures, these people, they're able to put their hands up on any rock surface, really, and communicate with this creature. And apparently they have been living a symbiotic relationship, um, you know, throughout its history. Planet wasn't able really to do very much for them when they were in captivity. But when push comes to shove, we actually start to see this planet taking part and actually causing earthquakes to smash the enemy when our uh, group was in trouble. And I just thought it was really cool to see a planet have an interaction and be a character of its own. And then we are introduced to some other cool aspects of the show. For example, we now know that the Lion's cockpits also serve as a hover cycle vehicle for when the Paladins want to exit the Lion's and travel around quickly. Yeah, I like that. I also like that each lion apparently now has their own special power. Lance figured out that his lion has ice powers, which goes along with the line, These rays are super cool, just like me. Keith has fire powers, and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, and also along the way we'll also see more uh, abilities from the lions. I like the whole living planet angle. It reminds me a lot of Green Lantern and how the Green Lanterns, basically, one of their lanterns is an entire sentient giant planet called Mogo. And he pretty much houses a lot of the lanterns if they need to hide and escape for a few seconds. So the whole thing with the Balmerans and their planet felt like, made me think that one of the uh, showrunners is a fan of the Green Lantern universe and decided to say, hey, Let's create a living planet and write three episodes around this thing. And they're like, all right, let's do it. And then, and we, then, also, we, have, sorry, go ahead. And then we also have the uh, antagonist for this episode, Commander or General Proroke, who pretty much has his own agenda to defeating the Paladins, taking Voltron in order to serve the Empire. And then, you know, that never ends well for characters like him. No, and then we also find that Voltron gets to be formed again in this episode and really takes a whacking to it, the Galeron fleet. It does. Before that happens, though, um, what the crew is doing with their cool hover cycles is they're trying to find where Shay was taken, Shay being uh, one of the characters from the family that Hunk and Gran ran into. So... They eventually find her in the core of Belmera, and it is a trap. Oh, but yes. the trap is short-lived because uh, that's this is when we're introduced to Shay being able to communicate with Balmera with her hand to the rock, sending a message to her family. And with that help, they're able to be freed. Forge Voltron gets to be formed. Galron fleet is totally like knocked out until something new crash lands on the surface of Balmera, and we get to find out what fun that is in the next episode. Yes, we do. 
And stick around, everybody, because we are going to be talking about that in the next episode. This review is pretty short and sweet because the whole episode is pretty much short and sweet. They go in there, they try to do as much as they can, and it seems a little too easy. And, you know, Voltron forms, Voltron wins. And then the Emperor is all like, no matter, I have another plan going, which pretty much goes hand in hand with what I said earlier that the witch Hagar has a new construct ready to rock their world. See you all on the next review. Bye-bye.